Two rare things are happening today. We're putting two cameras that cost less than $400 to the test. And number two, we have a car in New York City. So let's get to it. A bunch of people always ask me, they're like, Becca, I'm looking to get a new camera, but I don't want to spend over $500. And quite frankly, I don't know anything about photography. And I then asked them, well, what phone do you have? Because what I've learned is that most people don't actually want to buy a camera system. They just need a better camera on their phone, which is a piece of technology they already know how to use. And in 2020 is getting hella good, especially for this price. So today we're putting, in my opinion, the best two cameras you can get for under $500 to the test. And they happen to be on phones. It's the Pixel 4a versus the 2020 iPhone SE versus NYC. All right, Daniel, I've wanted to shoot in this location for so long. First stop is Keith Haring's Crack is Whack mural up in Harlem, and I knew this would offer a ton of contrast, especially on a sunny day. Here we are testing the iPhone SE's 12 megapixel single rear camera, which is the same single camera found on the iPhone 8, and the Pixel 4a's 12.2 megapixel single rear camera, which Google has used since the Pixel 2. We will get into processing power in a bit, but right off the bat, you can see that both of these cameras are extremely capable in perfect lighting conditions, and differentiating them feels a bit nitpicky, but but you can start to see one difference. Where the pixel evens out the exposure, the iPhone is not afraid to hold onto the shadows and create more contrast. You can see it in the black lines of the mural and the shadows of the trees on the pavement. And you can even see it in the way the iPhone holds on to that deep orange and doesn't try to brighten it up. And real quick, all of the photos in this video, I let the camera make the choice of what to focus on and what exposure to set. All right, Phil, next up, let's do it. Let's do it. Like, is that the new Pixel 4a? Damn, that was good. The iPhone SE, you got both those? <laughs> so, so silly. We're in Central Park to test out the video capabilities of both these phones. The iPhone's rear camera can do up to 4K at 24, 30, and 60 frames per second, while the Pixel Max is out at 4K, 30 frames per second. Both phones front-facing cameras record at 1080, 30 frames per second. Personally, this is where the lower cost of these cameras starts to show for me. For starters, the image stabilization in both cameras is just not. <laughs> I found the footage to be jittery and lacking any smoothness, and there's a real debate over the need for phone gimbals in the age of better camera systems, but for both of these devices, if you want smooth footage, external stabilization is going to be necessary. And then you can really see both cameras trying to decide what to expose for and adjusting focus like super often. Overall, the video is just fine from both of these devices. More than passable for social platforms, but really lacking for anything more. Oh, and real quick, buds, there was one other thing that kept happening at Central Park. It was a 90 degree day and we were in direct sunlight and I kept getting an error message on the Pixel 4a when I would start shooting video that said, device is too hot, video quality might be affected. I'm really not sure what effects this had on the image quality, but the iPhone managed to stay cooler to the physical touch and didn't seem to have the same issues. All right, next on our New York City tour, we're headed to Queens, baby Queens. Look at those clouds. Welcome to Long Island City, and I picked this location for a particular reason. There's a large sign behind me that looks incredible with a wide angle lens, and there's a beautiful cityscape that looks so good on a telephoto, neither of which these cameras have. They just have a standard lens. The single rear lens on the iPhone SE can optically zoom up to five times, while Pixel 4a's optical zoom is up to seven times. To be clear, these are paintings, these are not photos. I honestly could not see myself actually posting these anywhere. Now, the lack of a wide angle lens on both of these camera systems is the biggest bummer for me. When I'm taking photos on my S10, I'm almost always in that wide angle. I just love the look of a fisheye. So for this video, I brought along a Moment 14 millimeter fisheye lens. Now this is an $100 accessory and something extra that you have to carry around. So the lack of more choice of lenses on these camera systems is definitely a downfall. Oh, and there is one feature on the Pixel that I did love when shooting the skyline. When you're framing up your shot, a little level comes up on the Pixel to tell you if the camera is tilted at all. And it's just super helpful. Now back to comparing them, there is one thing that actually starts to separate these two camera systems. Bye, Phil. Thank you. 
So I've actually been shooting all over New York City for well over a week with both of these cameras. And we have to talk about portrait mode versus shooting at night because it is the thing that might make you choose, besides Android and iOS, the iPhone or the Pixel. When you take a portrait mode photo on the Pixel, the frame is cropped one and a half times in, while the iPhone, it doesn't crop at all. Like, all of these portrait mode photos were taken from the same spot. The Pixel's portrait mode feels like I put on a longer lens. And usually I would put on a longer lens when taking a portrait with a camera that uses interchangeable lenses. But with the Pixel, I found myself just having to back up and move a lot to get the right framing. And getting like a really good portrait mode photo still feels like a stroke of luck. And night mode. Shooting at night gives the Pixel the upper edge because the iPhone doesn't have a night mode at all. Although I do prefer the choice the iPhone made in not brightening in the sky in this shot. Overall, the iPhone's photos at night just need to be brighter and the software can't really do that, especially when there's practically no light at all. And while the Pixel definitely wins at shooting in the dark, the processing power of the SE is unreal. Inside the SE is Apple's new A13 Bionic chip, and it is fast, like wicked fast. I often call it the Pixel Snapdragon 730G processor, taking its time to process images. And when opening the camera app, taking a photo and then reviewing it, the iPhone just whips. Like y'all, she whips. <laughs> okay, so over a hundred and something odd photos later, probably close to like 300 photos later, what do we think? For $350, the Pixel 4a, your night mode is truly still mind blowing. And I totally love the level that pops up when framing. Maybe a gimmick, but actually helpful. But I did not like how you brought up the shadows to make a more even image. And the processing time was disappointing. So the $400 iPhone SE. For starters, you're not Android and I'm kind of a big Android fan. And taking photos at night left me upping the brightness. But I love how you aren't afraid of the shadows and hold on to the blacks. Plus that A13 chip for $400, <laughs> that's kind of nuts. So I think I gotta go iPhone SE, dude, which is like crazy to me because the Pixel has been a camera powerhouse for quite a while now. And side note, I was kind of shocked to see that the iPhone was leaning more blue than the Pixel for once. Cause like it was always like a cardinal sign of the Pixel that it was like more blue. Anywho, what do you think? Because it's getting to the point where a lot of this is just subjective. And y'all, thanks for coming back for another episode of Full Frame. We definitely tried something super different on this one. I went into this just wanting to give you guys as many photo samples as possible and really let you decide. Regardless, be kind to those around you, but more importantly, be kind to yourself. And uh, I hope you're well, bud. We'll see you on the next one. Hold on. Something crazy just happened. Uh, the Verge passed 3 million subs on YouTube. What? <laughs> Huge thank you to all of you guys from the team and me. We appreciate y'all so much and we got tons more coming your way. So keep a lot to the verge.